I tipped my toe into the psychology effects when I talked about clothes make the man and judging a book by its cover. The anchoring effect I went whole hog. Now I'm going to take it one step further. I want to talk about what's called the backfire effect. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the host and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... The Heart of Disbelief. When it is that you believe something so strongly that even when someone comes to you with evidence, you've anchored it in so strongly in your mind that evidence to the contrary turns it around on you and makes you believe it even more, even though the evidence shows otherwise. And it's a good reason why we tell stories. To very slowly and carefully put things into your mind... And this can be good and bad, because some of these things, these common sense thoughts, are very right, and some of them are very wrong. Have you ever had an argument with someone where you know 100% that you are right? Are you sure that it was you that was right? Because I wouldn't be too surprised if the person you were arguing with was 100% sure they were right. I've had those arguments myself, and I've been on both sides of this effect, so I'm very familiar with it. In general, though, I want to try to take a step back here and look at stories and things and the way we look at them that sometimes doesn't exactly equal our own perceptions. Now, I warn you, uh, my two examples are both musical stories, the Pina Colada song and Baby It's Cold Outside. But either way, no matter how you feel about those songs or songs in general, they're stories we tell, memories we've created attachments we formed to our beliefs and as we look at them we're looking at our own interpretation of why we tell stories and how we tell stories and with that let's just talk for a moment about why we call something the backfire effect because it backfires on you when you try to show someone that they're wrong and they believe even more so they're right now for those of you that don't know I review stories as they come up, TV shows, movies, books, comics, but I also do these theory videos every Sunday and Throwback Thursday every Thursday. If that sounds interesting to you, click the subscribe button. But let's talk about disbelief for a moment. Do you believe in aliens? Is there any amount of evidence I could show you that would make you believe in aliens? Or make you disbelieve in aliens? What about politics? And I know that's a tricky subject. But if you're 100% convinced that the only reason someone would vote for one person or another is because they're evil, maybe you should remember no one actually thinks of themselves as evil. Everyone has bridged themselves to believe what they're saying is in the best interest of everyone else, or at least themselves. One of those things that we kind of paint with a broad brush and we have to be careful about, but... Let's get away from serious topics for a minute and go to silly ones. One of my highest rated videos is the one where I was trying to explain that Comic Book Girl 19 had this whole video where she kept saying, I don't understand why I can't explain to you why you shouldn't like this movie. Well, the problem is, is that you either like the movie or you don't. There is nothing you can do to tell me why I shouldn't like something. Now then, you could say it's constructed badly you could say there are flaws in it but once you start telling me why i shouldn't like it you're just going to make me like it more and since that was suicide squad specifically i just want to point out the other night it was on hbo and i sat through it from the scene with will smith and the gun in the prison straight through loving every minute and that's got to be the fifth or sixth time i've seen it and i still love that movie flaws and all of course the same way someone might anchor in the fact that they didn't like it I may be just as guilty of anchoring in that I do, and when shown evidence of the fact that it was a bad movie, maybe that just makes me stick to my guns all the more and say, no, I really loved it, and here's why. Maybe that's why arguing and discussing in certain ways just doesn't work. And that's part of the reason why we tell stories. Because we tell a story as a way to very simply and slowly make you see something, that's why themes and symbolism are so important. That's why we tell allegories. 
because we want you to believe something, so we use something to make you believe it. Now, have you ever heard the song Escape? I bet you have. It's the Pina Colada song. You know what totally messes with me? The first time I heard it, I really listened to the words, and I said, wow, that's the most romantic song I've ever heard. And I've had a lot of people discuss with me that I'm crazy, not just about this, but about other things. But one day, it came on when I was at work, and I said that, hey, you know, this is a really romantic song. And the woman just, that I was talking to just stared at me. How can you say that? This whole song is nothing about how this guy's going to cheat on his wife, and the wife's going to cheat on him, and there is absolutely nothing romantic about that. And I said, well, no, you're not looking at it the same way I am. See, these two people were totally perfect for each other. They love the exact same things. But somewhere along the way, they forgot why they were perfect for each other. They both like pina coladas, long walks in the rain. They're not into yoga. They have half a brain. They're looking to escape for that final true love. And both of them find each other again. Because at that moment, when they think all is lost, the other one is the one they find. And they remember why they're the world's perfect couple. And I think that's a romantic way of saying, hey, at the end of the day, we were meant to be together. But there were other songs, notwithstanding the whole, you know, people mishearing things, that people take whole different ideas from. And one of the other ones that I've gotten into arguments about on both sides of is Baby It's Cold Outside. Baby It's Cold Outside. All right, I won't sing. People initially told me that it was a rape song, and people convinced me. They succeeded with their information. On the fact that, okay, it's kind of creepy, he is kind of insistent, and then it never quite felt that way to me, but I understood where they were coming from. And then I saw this on Facebook, and because I was doing research for this anyway, I said, well, let's see what the actual reason is. And you know what? This guy perfectly said what I'd been thinking all those years. The woman isn't saying, hey, leave me alone, creep. What she's saying is, hey, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be in this situation, but I kind of like being in this situation, and I need an excuse. And anyone, male or female, that's ever been having fun can tell you that maybe doing the right thing isn't always on your mind. I'm going to actually go back to when I was in high school, hanging out with my friends, and I knew what my curfew was. I knew I was supposed to be home by, I want to say it was 11 o'clock, my mom let me stay out to senior year, and that sometimes I'd stay out till 1 or 2, and I knew, I knew I was going to get in trouble for it. But you know what? I did it anyway, and then I'd always come home with an excuse. Always an excuse. But if I didn't want to stay out, I wouldn't have. And now, that's not 100% the same with this woman, but it's pretty similar. At the end of the day, she's saying... Well, what will other people think? How much trouble will I be in for saying that I want to stay? But the real heart of the matter is, she wants to stay. Maybe the fact that I changed my mind, and actually changed it and then changed it back, says something about the fact that I didn't anchor in either one too permanently. But at the end of the day, it's a great example of which way do you see it? Is there enough evidence on either side to make you believe the other? I, I don't know. I'm really a middle-of-the-road type of guy on a lot of things, so it's hard for me to say for sure. But as you're looking at these arguments one way or another, as you're thinking about what you do and don't believe, be it politically, religiously, opinions of a story, even what comic book company you personally subscribe to, at the end of the day, does it matter what the facts are, or does it only matter what you believe? And if someone tries to present you with those facts, does it change anything? Of course, everyone has to answer that on their own. But maybe, just maybe, this holiday season, when one of those songs come on that make you think, and there's quite a few Christmas ones, you can think about what it is that it makes you think about, what it makes you feel, and how much of that you've anchored in, and how much of that you don't care what anyone else says. And maybe next time someone asks you, is this count as anime? You won't jump to a conclusion right away. 
Or if they say, is this a good movie? You'll have to stop and consider that. Or maybe, just maybe, if they say this is a good movie, you'll say, wrong! Bad movie! Bad movie! A movie so bad that I rated, I created its own rating system for it. It is below my normal, and it is mercury. Do not touch it. But maybe that, even, is just me not letting someone make an argument. If you have an argument for Gem, just leave it in the comments, and I will promptly, probably puke if you thought that was a good movie. Today, it's the only movie that breaks my number one rule. Every story tells us something, and every wor story is worth exploring. But if you think that this was worth talking about, click that thumbs up, and of course, share this video online with your friends. And of course, if this is your first time there, click that little subscribe button, because I'd love for you to join our little community here. One where I like to dissect why we tell stories and how we tell stories. In this particular case, how we absorb stories. And I think that it's an interesting little bit of pop psychology. Up next week, I think I'm going to go into a little more of Storytelling 101 with what a deconstruction is. For now, have a good night, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell.